Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, we forever thank him for his coming and we thank him for his raising up in our midst, his true servant, his last apostle, our divine leader, our divine teacher, and our divine guide in the personage of the most honorable and humble Mr. Elijah Muhammad. It is in those two holy and righteous names that I would like to greet you once again, my dear beloved brothers and sisters in the nation of Islam's greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language once again. Assalamu alaikum. Um, Brother Minister um, Kenneth, thank you for affording me the opportunity to address the believers. Our guest here today um, is always an honor and a privilege to represent the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Um, this rostrum that was built by God in person and his holy messenger is not something that we should take lightly. Um, in a world filled with falsehood and, as you said, enchantment, um, it is a reprieve from a, 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 a web of deception to come into Muhammad Temple of Islam and to hear the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And this rostrum is a rostrum of truth. That's right. And what comes... That's all right, brother. Keep going with me. <laughs> it's all right. That shouldn't be right now. That's the devil calling right yeah, now. You want to... <laughs> <laughs> all praise is due to Allah. This rostrum is a rostrum of truth. That's right. And whatever comes off this rostrum is not of myself. That's right. It was taught to us by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. This is a sacred rostrum. All right. That's right. It's a holy rostrum. Yes, sir. And it shouldn't be taken for sport and play. Yes, sir. There you go. So, I won't be too long today, but uh, I had some things that were on my mind that uh, I wanted to share with the believers. And it occurred to me while the minister was up here teaching, and he kept emphasizing truth, truth, and the importance of truth. People in this world say there are people of the mind that truth is something that's relative to the individual mm -hmm. and that there is no absolute truth. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They challenge the teaching of Islam and those of us who hold on to a strong moral bearing Come on. and say that there is no absolute truth. There is no absolute morality mm -hmm. that is pretty much I could do what I want to do when I want to do it. And you can't say anything about it and you have no right to tell me any different. I'm an adult. Mm -hmm. That may be that may be all right for a temporary period of time. Mm -hmm. But the long term consequences of a lack of discipline, a lack of adherence to a law, a moral authority and a truth that is greater than one's individual self in the long run always leads to destruction. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we have a long record of history mm -hmm. to prove I know that. Right. We were given this actual facts board, as I mentioned last time I was here, by Master Farad Muhammad. Come on. And the actual facts board was, was built upon by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mm -hmm. One of the flags on this board is the flag of Islam. Mm -hmm. One of the principles of Islam is justice. Come on. And all throughout the book of the teaching of the Holy Quran, when we read the Holy Quran cover to cover, we read, mm -hmm. be maintainers of justice. Islam is the religion of justice. Mm -hmm. 
Even if it bears witness against yourself. Even if it bears witness against your nearest of kin. Come on. Be maintainers of justice. Yes. But there is no justice without truth. There must be a standard, an absolute standard of truth in order for justice to exist. Because I can't give you justice based on a standard that's different from this brother or that sister. We all must have justice on the same equal terms. So there is no justice without truth. Now, why do I bring this up? You know, in the modern day, we live in a, in a, in a time of a lot of sensationalism. You go on the internet, everything is hyper sensationalized. Social media plays to that, right? So you got a lot of this stuff, this um, return to blackness talk on, you, you know, Recently going on in the last few years, the movie Black Panther. Right? Mm -hmm. right? Yes, sir. Uh, 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 black this and black that and black this. When you go on social media, this is what you see. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, the minister spoke about enchanters. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about justice. Come on. Right? Yes, sir. Now, it is a heck of a trick. It's like pulling a rabbit out of your hat. All right. For you to talk all of this blackness. And not talk the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Right. Yes, Before the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. There was a saying. If you're black, stay back. If you're brown, stick around. If you're yellow, you're mellow. It was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Who told you. That the original man is the Asiatic black man. Yes. The maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, the father of civilization, yes. the God of the universe. Yes. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. It was the honorable Elijah Muhammad that told you the white man is the devil. Yes, sir. He's the one who told you that. That's right. Come on, brother. Speech. It was the honorable Elijah Muhammad. Who told you that the time is at hand. That separation is the only solution. Right. To the problems of the so-called American Negro. That's He's right. the one who taught you that. That's yes, right. Yes sir. Now social media is all lit up. Come on. With people that talk the same thing he taught 80 years ago. But they won't give him the credit. That's right. Yes, Teach brother. Teach the truth. They won't mention his name. That's right. They, they mention his students, but they don't mention him. That's right. Deep, brother. Quit having your own the teacher. Something is afoot. Come on, brother. Teach. Because amidst all of this, there's only one man with a solution. That's right. That's right. There's only one man with the solution. I'll give you an example. Yesterday. I was I went to go see my mother and I go to the store. We were having a nice little cookout. Right. And I went to the store and I brought some ginger beer. Mm -hmm. I like, you know, the Jamaican ginger beer. Yes, sir. And it comes in a bottle. It looks like beer. Right. right? But it's ginger beer. There's no alcohol in it. So I go and I put the, the ginger beer on top of the counter. And the lady behind the counter says, do you have ID? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I looked at her and I said, there's no alcohol in this. Right. And then I looked, I said, do you know how old I am? Right. <laughs> you asking me for ID? I was flattered. I'll be honest with you, man. I was, wow, that's crazy. Right. But at the age of 43, Right. I'm being ID. And you know why that is? Because of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's teacher. Because I don't drink. Right. I don't smoke. Right. I eat one meal a day. Come on. I fast. Yes, 
I exercise. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. I don't entertain nonsense. That's right. And you bring nonsense in my in my life, I get rid of you. There you go. You're not going to disturb my peace. Islam means All peace. Right. Yes. Come on. You're not just you ain't bringing no nonsense in my life. All right. All not right. doing that. Don't bring no drama here. Come on. Take brother. that somewhere else. All right. Teach, brother. Because my life is my life. Yes. Sir. And once it's gone. There's no coming back. I get one of those. That's right. Teach, brother. Right. Teach. So I apologize sometimes if I'm curt, if I'm rude, if I cut you off. I Listen, I'm trying to live the best life that I can possibly live. Don't bring no drama in my life. I don't blame yes, you. Yes, sir. I don't bring you to, to a lot. Don't disturb my peace of mind. That's right. Teach, brother. Mm -hmm. Teach. And it is Elijah Muhammad, the honorable Elijah Muhammad, who taught us how to eat the live, who taught us... Gave us instructions all the way down to the finest and most refined aspect of life. How to conduct ourselves. There's rules to Islam. Come on. There's an objective truth. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. By which justice is dispensed among the believers and the non-believers. Alright, come on brother, teach. Teach brother. But you can't have that. Mm. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't have blackness without without morality. You can't have blackness without taking care of your health, without respecting the black woman, without respecting your brother, without turning to the God that came to save your funky behind. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everybody wants their cake and eat it too. They want to be black, but they don't want Elijah. Yeah. Do you know why? Because they don't want the responsibility that comes with being a Muslim. Right. That's, the That's why they love Malcolm. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's why they love him. Because yeah. Malcolm gave him blackness without the responsibility. You can still drink with Malcolm. You can still smoke with Malcolm. You can still fornicate with Malcolm. Come on, brother. Teach. Mm. But in here, homie don't play that. Right. It's right. It's right. You want one of those sisters, you got to go through the chain of command. Come on, brother. Teach. You, yo, baby, yo, one of these sisters, and we'll rip every limb out of your body and beat you with it. Yes, sir. Teach, brother. Teach. The FOI does not play when it comes to the black woman. That's fine. Right. 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 Peace, brother. And we don't play when it comes to securing what's ours. That's right. People, people, oh, you know, the nation and, you know, things what they say. Listen, brother, we're soldiers in here, man. We're not Cub Scouts. That's right. We will fight to defend what's ours. Come on. Come on, brother. Just like... Any other man would fight to defend what's his when he's in his natural mind. That's but when you're in your unnatural mind, that's when you turn the other cheek. That's right. Come on, brother. Teach. Yes, sir, my brother. People calling during temple time. Yes, sir. They must not know. <laughs> Hope they calling because they want to come. That would be great, right? <laughs> Are y'all having that Muslim meeting over there? Can we come and listen to that good truth? Some of that good food? More praise is due to Allah. So what's in the news now? Yeah, Kanye West. Right. <laughs> he already had his mind was lost. I don't understand why people are responding to this man the way... That they are. I mean, he has a white wife. Right. Think about it. You know, his his father-in-law is his mother-in-law. Yeah. I mean, think about it. That's yeah. Right. That's true. His father-in-law is a man who has breast. Right. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, man got to be out of his mind. Yes, sir. So I don't know why people are acting that way towards him. But but here's the thing. And I will say this, because justice, right? Is based on truth. Right. And part of our problem is that we don't. We, we're very selective in who the mob attacks. Uh -huh. 
All right. Mm -hmm. Teach. Mm -hmm. Teach, brother. The mob, you know, the mob, the Gestapo mentality. We want to, mm -hmm. you know, attack the mob. You, you violated, you know, the groupthink process. Right. So then we're going to march you into a concentration camp. Very selective. Yes, we are. If you won't condemn Kanye, <laughs> Come on. why don't you condemn Snoop? Right. right. Come yeah. on, brother. You know. What makes Snoop authentically black? He's made his whole career based on talking about pimping women, right. selling drugs, gang banging. How is he authentically black right. and Kanye isn't? Come on. Why the double standard? Do we really believe? Think about it. On a subconscious level, have we been so thoroughly poisoned that we believe the stereotypes right. that have been put on us? That to be authentically black, we have to be street. We got to be hood. We got to be on. down. Come so on. the crack dealer, he's authentically black. But the brother who gets up in the morning, goes to work, provides for his family, he's a sellout. Come on. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Teach, brother. Teach. That's how we think. Yes, sir. That's how we think. That's a real nigga right there. Mm -hmm. That's what we say. Right. That's what we think. Yes, sir. That's what we say, though. Teach, brother. What are we? They talking about the Crips are going to come after him. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. The Crips. Yeah. The, the, the Crips. Are we talking about the same Crips from Los Angeles? Right. The actual Crips are going to come after Kanye West. Right. <laughs> this is why no one takes us serious. This is, this is what I'm saying about being selected. The Crips. A criminal organization that is responsible for the death of thousands of brothers right. thousands mm -hmm. thousands thousands of black people mm -hmm. have been killed by the bloods and crips since the early 1970s when they were founded in the 70s after the destruction of the black panther party out in los angeles by raymond washington tookie williams Come on. thousands right in the 80s well should I say, I think it's been estimated something up to upwards of 15 to 20,000 young black men have been killed in the gang warfare in Los Angeles and throughout the country. 15 to 20,000 soldiers. Young men. Young brothers. What the hell gives you the moral high ground to condemn someone? Who the heck has Kanye West killed? One black, did he, has he killed one black man? One. So why the double standard? Come on, teach, brother. Mm -hmm. No, we don't like what he said. Come on. Right? right? But at the end of the day, he just said something. Come on. That's all. Do we want to create the kind of society where we beat people up because we don't like what they said? No. Is that what we want? Mm -hmm. The brother don't understand. That's all. He don't know. But we should really take that energy and start checking each other mm -hmm. on things that really matter. Come on. Right. Like brother, brother and I coming out of Dunkin' Donuts earlier. Right. And we hear Cardi B blasting in the car and, and some, some young woman is there reciting the lyrics, rapping Cardi B's lyrics, filthy lyrics to some baby that's sitting in the back seat mm -hmm. and the baby's going like this, bopping their head. Ain't that right. Yes, sir. Mm. Yeah. Where's the outrage for that? Young man getting the same car, music blasting, lights up a Newport with the baby in the back seat. Where's the outrage? What are you teaching that child? But you want to talk about Kanye? Check yourself, man. That's right. Come on, teach, brother. Teach the truth. Make sure that your side of the street is clean. That's right. The heck you minding somebody else's business for? That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. See a young brother the other day on, on, on the D train. Do rag pants down here walking, pushing baby mama, pushing the cart. 
Couldn't have been no more than 20 years old. What's that young man doing for a living? Where is he going? Looking like that. What employer in their right mind? What is he qualified to do? Yes, sir. What trade? What skill? Right. Mm -hmm. Good question. But we do have time to condemn everyone else. We got time to do that. Oh, yeah. But we don't have time to learn skills. Uh -huh. Things that are marketable. Things that you can say, look, I know how to wire this home. I know how to weld. I know, I know carpentry. I know this. I know that. Right? Now, I got a group of brothers with me. Let's get busy. Mm -hmm. Let's get organized and let's, and let's bid for some work. All right. We don't know how to do that. No. But we know how to complain about everything. And don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. The white man is the devil. Mm -hmm. He the only ain't no devil under the ground. He's the only devil. Mm -hmm. But you, I mean, at what point, at what point does it become like a child when you mature to adulthood and, and you may have had an abusive childhood and now you're 25, 30 years old, but you're still a bum. Come on. Using that as an excuse. And you're using your childhood as an excuse yeah, right. for your lack of work ethic. Right. At what point does it become a cop out? Right. That may have been a legitimate reason. When you were 15, 16 years old, but now you're 30. Come on. All right. Teach. All right. And there ain't nobody trying to hear your excuses. That's right. That's right. Real life. See, you may have had something to say when they had separate water fountains. Come on. See, and I know, see, listen. And I've always used this as a standard. My old man came here from, from Colombia. From Barranquilla, which was an old sugar plant, or sugar ports, Barranquilla. My, my old man's very swarthy, dark-skinned brother, mm -hmm. right? He comes here, and I hear the stories of how they used to say, nigga, get in the back of the bus. Mm -hmm. And my father would say, or, or brothers from that part of the area of the, of the world, they would say, well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a Negro or Black American. And, and the devil would say, well, we ain't ask you what kind of nigga you was. We just said get in the back of the bus. Right. 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 Spanish niggas. Yeah. Right. French. We ain't ask you what kind. Get in the back. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So Jim Jim Crow, apartheid, which was real life apartheid here in this country. We talk about what happened in South Africa. That happened here. That's right. right. For a hundred years. Right. On the books, laws that were written by by reconstructionists or people that after the Reconstruction era in, in the South, mm -hmm. right? Yes, sir. Now, back then, we could have said, hey, you know, this, this devil got his foot on our neck. And I'm not saying that he doesn't now. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just different today. Right. It's not as overt. It's more covert now. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. right? Yes, sir. But here we are. Like the messenger said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself 100 years up from slavery and you still begging the devil for a job. Right. And you don't have something to do for yourself. Come on. You should create your own job. Right. But if you are to go to him for a job, you should behave thus and so in the rules on how to keep a job and what he gave us. How to maintain a job. You don't go on there discussing your religion, right. politics. Right. You just man pays you for some time and you do the work. Go about your business. Right. right? Right. But the point is this. At what point does it become a cop out? I'm walking through Harlem yesterday. I see a Whole Foods, whole bunch of white homosexuals mm -hmm. with their Starbucks coffees uh -huh. and the soy and the latte. Mm -hmm. Don't drink. And that soy, you know what it does to a man right. filling with est estrogen. Mm -hmm. Bunch of faggots in Harlem mm -hmm. walking around. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but that didn't happen by accident. No. And that's what we don't understand. These people are organized. Right. When you see things happening, gentrification, when you see a Starbucks in Harlem, when you see a Starbucks in Bedford Stuyvesant or in Bridgeport or, or wherever, that happened through organization. Right. They had 
financers, Come people on. with big money financing stuff That's like right. that, and they were organized. Our problem is we're not organized. Our problem is we just go about our lives listening to Cardi B and condemning Kanye West on the internet talking about black but don't want to give the messenger no credit. Come on, brother. Teach. And we're not organized. So anybody can just come in and do what they want and turn Harlem, which was used to be the capital of black America, into, into, into Starbucks, you know, Homo utopia. Think about it. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. With a lack of unity. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Teach, brother. And then you got the Muslims. Oh, he doesn't pray properly. He doesn't wear his sandals. And this one, uh, he rolls his pants up six inches above the ankle. So he's a heretic. And he's a kafir, and this one doesn't follow my minister. Come on, brother. Teach. Teach, brother. And my minister said this, and you're a hypocrite because you don't follow him. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Come on. And the whole time, right. this devil burying his size 12 wingtip in our rear end. Yes, sir. Every and we find every excuse. Yes. Teach, brother. Not to unify. Right. <laughs> every excuse. That's right. That's right. That's up. We find every excuse. When is it going to end? Come on. Wait, wait. I'm 43 years old. Right. I had knowledge of myself when I was 17. Come on. 26 years I done been in this teaching. Come on. Teach, I seen brothers come, go. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I saw brothers that were solid. You see them all. 10 years later, you run into them, they're on a the corner somewhere looking like they dope fiends. Come on. Come on now. The race is not to the swift. But when the heck are we going to stand up? Come on, when are we going to realize? What is it going to take? What the heck is going to take for us to wake up? When are we going to get our moral bearing? And start checking one another. On, brother. brother, you out of your rabbit behind. The heck are you doing lighting up a Newport in front of that child? Mm -hmm. That's right. What are you doing smoking reefer in front of children? Right. That's somebody's grandmother. Mm -hmm. What are you doing lighting up a split in front of somebody's grandmother? On, are you crazy? And you know why this happens? Because Martin, you see me, Dr. King said it. Bad things happen when good men fail to stand up. Now you can't blame the sisters for it. Right. That's right. Come on. You can't blame you can't blame them for that. It's not their responsibility. It's our responsibility as men. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. It's the mm -hmm. truth. It's the truth. It's it's got true. these gangs running through our neighborhoods. Yeah. Got everybody under pressure. Mm -hmm. right. That's true. Because there's no strength coming from spiritual men. Come on. Teach, brother. Teach. Mm -hmm. Spiritual Teach. men that'll tell you, listen, brother. I'm not gonna tell you how to make your living. But you're not doing that here. All right. right. Come on now. Teach. If you bring that nonsense around the FOI and MGT, or if you bring that nonsense in this neighborhood, if you bring it within five yards of this square area, brother, there's going to be a problem right. that you're not going to be able to solve. There you go. Teach, brother. Teach. And that's the difference between us and yesteryear. The FOI would see you years ago. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, they would. Mm. Yes, they would. The fruit. Mm. I heard stories of dope fiends in Harlem leaning over. They see the FOI coming. Brother, stand up. Fruit keep moving. Brother, go back to nine. Yeah. Yeah. That's, right. That's the kind of respect That's right. Absolutely. that the fruit had. Right. That's the truth, brother. That's the truth. And this weakness. Yes. Right. And you got these big fat ministers standing up on the roster, robbing everybody of their atmosphere. When they get on the roster, when they inhale, everybody got to go put on put on oxygen mask and whatnot because they don't rob the whole room of its atmosphere. Yes, sir. And what is the atmosphere? Right. 
But the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad ain't no doggone well, brother. You're not supposed to be weighing up it in yourself, standing up in front of the people representing the messenger. But brother got a weight problem, he got a weight problem. Put him in the, put him in the, put him in the audience. Heck are you doing standing up there 500 pounds talking about the messenger's teaching? Come on, brother. Teach, teach, Muhammad. Talking about this is my captain, and he looks like Moby Dick, the whale. Come on now. Teach you the truth. Teach my heart. Teach my heart. Come on. Weakness. Yeah. Right. They used to be a saying, it rolls downhill. You know what that is. Yes, it yes, rolls sir. downhill. Yes. If it's not strong at top, it's going to be weak on the bottom. Right. Weakness starts here and then it filters down. Yes, it does. Come on, brother. Teach. Teach yeah. Where are the soldiers? Good question. I see brother saluting. <laughs> yes, what the heck is that? In the world. <laughs> yes, sir. Salam alaikum, brother. <laughs> yes, sir. What the heck? <laughs> Captain Crunch. Yes, sir. Oh, salam alaikum, brother. <laughs> Oh, praise is due to Allah for the humble Elijah Muhammad. <laughs> it's never going to get right. That's right. And these young boys ain't going to respect you. No, no sir. Because they looking for something to fall into. Right. That's why they join gangs. Because right. right. they only respect strength. Right. Come on. That's, that's why they join the Marines that's and the right. Army yes, that's and the gangs. There they join everything but the black man's army. Because they don't see no strength coming from the leadership. Right. Some cookie cutter, watered down version of Islam. Scared to call a devil the devil. All right. Scared, scared to tell the black man the truth to his face. Scared mixing up teaching. Scared to call Malcolm a hypocrite. Scared to, scared to say that God is a man. Not no spook that came in a man. But a man. Of live flesh human being who is supreme in knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and power. Don't you dare come up on Muhammad's rostrum putting cut on the messenger's teaching. Big, fat, nasty slobs. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Because if the messenger was alive physically, always alive spiritually. Now, I'm not of the belief that he's alive physically. If someone in here believes that, I apologize for offending you, but I can only tell you what's in my heart. Right. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Come on. When the messenger was alive physically, mm -hmm. you would not even be allowed in the temple looking like that. All right, now. Mm -hmm. You check. In fact, when I had, let me tell you, I had the temple on 135th Street a few years back. We used to put a scale. I had a scale in the temple. Every month we would weigh brothers. Brother, step on that scale. I had one brother stepped on it, and the thing went around twice. That's how big he was. And he was only a baby. He was a kid. Excuse my. It's like about 20 years old. Young brother. Baby. Step on the scale, brother. Thing goes around twice. I said, okay, brother. You know, we're going to work with you. That's right. So I put a personal trainer on him. You know, brother couldn't overcome that weakness, though. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, open up the bag. He got Twinkies in it. You know, couldn't overcome the weakness. But but he may have been able to overcome it if we didn't have, you know, hypocrites in the temple working against. Right. I mean, and that's our problem. That's why I said, listen, you know, yeah, the white man's a devil. Point the finger and this, this, and that. But we got to check each other, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He can only do to us what we permit him to do. Yes, that's why when Allah says, did you, did, and the devil say, oh, no, I have no power over them. Right. I called and they obey. Report all slackness, weakness, and wrongdoing. All right. Come on, brother. Teach. I said I wasn't going to be here too long, so. <laughs> you know how it is, Brother Minister. You get on the restroom, you know. You know. <laughs> and I, you know, I don't know nothing else. 
And I don't want to know anything else. This man saved my life. And I don't, and I don't, you know, if I live to be 100, 200 years, there's no way I can repay him for what he gave me. There's no way. I already know that. I thank Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I thank Allah who came in the divine person of Master Farad Muhammad. I can't, I think, I can never thank Allah, Master Farad Muhammad. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said in the fall of America that Allah, his proper name is Master Farad Muhammad. He said that. Yes, so stop trying to cut the teaching and you want to start appeasing Muslims in the East. And listen, brother, you know, if they don't believe like us, they don't believe like us. That's right. You know, listen, listen, brother. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that every Muslim is the brother of the Muslim. Now we stand in on principle. If I treat you with respect, you treat me with respect. If I respect your family, you respect my family. You might try to do harm to me because I said Allah is a man. Now I'm going to close with this. Because this is one of the favorite ones that they go after. Surah 112. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of theology because my time is up. I'm going to give the Rashim back to the minister of this temple. The unity. Right. When they say, how can Allah be a man? Come on. All right. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Stop. Those are attributes. Yes, sir. How does a spook have an attribute? Come on. Mm. Keep your brother. Common sense. Man is beneficent. All right. Man is merciful. Yes. All right. Allah is Al Rahman. Right. The beneficent. Al Rahim. The merciful. Yes. Definite article. Why? Greater degree of rank. Yes. Right. Come on, teach brother. Every black man is God. Right. By nature. Come on. By nature. By nature. All right. By nature. Right? Yes, Gotta be clear with that. Because <laughs> people think, people think I'm God because I quote 120, I smoke a spliff, I drink beer, you know, and I can do whatever I want because I'm God. Right. No, sir. No, exactly. Come on. Break. And that's why I opened up an objective standard of truth. That's right. Come on. We don't make it up as we go along. Come on. There's some rules you got to obey here. That's right. Like the movie Donnie Brasco. What, what, what are you wearing jeans for? Well, get pants like mine. That's against the rules. Shave that mustache. It's against the rules. Right. 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 <laughs> There's rules, brother. It's a code. Al Rahman, Al Rahim. Mm -hmm. Say he. Mm -hmm. He. Right. He. 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 Yeah. he. Allah is one. What is one? Uno. One book. Uno. 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 One pluma. Pen. Una pluma. One pen. Right. One. One. One rostrum, one something. Mm -hmm. One. Now, spook, how do you measure a spook? How do you quantify a spook? How do you do that? Mathematically speaking, I'm not talking about some abstract concept that some Mustezala uh, scholar from the, the mid uh, uh, Persian century, uh, you know, during the Persian dynasty, the Abbasid dynasty, right, with all these right. scholars, and you know, they, they got this Greek philosophy and they start, you know, taking Allah in the outer space. I'm not talking about them people. I'm not talking about Al Ghazali. Some of these names you may not know unless you're a, a historian of Islam. Come on, I'm not talking about Al Ghazali, Ibn Tamayya. I'm not talking about men like that. I'm talking about what the Quran says. Right. I don't take my dictates from what some medieval scholar says. I take my dictates from the Quran itself and what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught of the Quran. Come on, right. 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 He, Allah, is one. That's right. He, 
Allah is he on whom we all depend. Whom? That's person. Whom? We all depend. He begets not, nor is he begotten. All right, stop. Pause. Right there. He begets not. How did we get here? All right. If he didn't beget. See, this is not absolute. This book was revealed after the Bible. And much of what is in this book is a condemnation of the doctrine of the Trinity. Right. And you have to read things within their context. Otherwise, you know, like everywhere you see him, look at him, take things taken out of context. Absolutely. Everywhere. Right. Yes, sir. Everywhere you see him, follow him. And, you know, even if he goes, follows Wallace, right. even if he marriages, you know, the, the, you know, come on, brother. Yes, sir. You got to jump through a whole lot of hoops to justify and rationalize stuff like that. Why don't you just keep the teaching simple and follow what Muhammad said? That's right. right. That's right. Muhammad. You're confusing me. Yes. I have no time for that. I'm too old. Right? So, taken out of context, yes, sir. this looks on the surface like it's talking about, you know, the great space coaster. But it's not. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Condemning the doctrine of the Trinity. Right. Because only one can be God. The yeah. Son, the Father, it can't, it can only be one. Mm -hmm. And there is none like him. 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 I don't, I don't, I don't see how, I don't see it. I don't see it. And see, a, a lot of what is taught in the name of the prophet does not come from the prophet. And only someone who knows the history of classical traditional Islam would be able to articulate an argument. Right. Or know that. But it doesn't come from the prophet. Much of what people attribute to the prophet came 200 years after he, after he passed away. And that's a whole other lecture unto his own. I'll teach it one day. And then I'll bring all of them hadiths up here and big books and stuff. And we can deal. So, all right. I'm done now. Okay. And I thank Allah that, that you uh, gave me. Your ear and your attention. All praises due to Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Sure. If there are any questions, please, you know, don't hesitate to ask. We after we break down, after the minister is done, we can dialogue. May Allah bless you. The light of understanding. I thank you for having me. Salam alaikum.